everyone. Welcome to the Tatted Tatter Crochet and Tatting Podcast. This is episode five and I'm very excited to be with you all today. So uh, I do want to say a welcome to any new viewers. If this is your first uh, time watching, welcome. Uh, and if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Um, we are, I forgot to check right before I started recording, but last I checked, we were at 138 subscribers, which is insane. <laughs> which brings us to our 100 subscriber giveaway. So last week we were at a little over 100, and so I uh, started a giveaway that ran through this last Friday evening, and then I took whomever was subscribed at the time and did a random number generator. And I've already sent a message via YouTube to this person, but our winner is number 89 of 134, because on Friday it was 134, uh, Linda Denton. So congratulations, and please message me back if you have not yet already. Um, you can email me, and this is for anyone too, if you ever have any questions or anything, at thetattedtatterca at gmail.com. I'll put it all. This seems to be the best space to put things, so that's where I've been putting them. Um, but yeah, uh, a, please do respond by this coming Wednesday at 7, uh, March 7th at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, to claim your prize. Otherwise, I will draw another winner, and you will get a couple of things. Very excited. Of course, I don't have all of them to show you, but you will get a hand-tatted bookmark with my Fancy Pants uh, Japanese crochet thread. And you will also get a skein of yarn. So I haven't had a chance to go by the yarn store near work yet because of various reasons. And uh, so if you message me before tomorrow afternoon, uh, you can actually tell me what kind of yarn you want. Otherwise, it'll be a 100 gram skein of hand dyed yarn. I'm gonna try to do it uh, local to this area because they do have some local dyers, I understand. And you'll get that. And then you'll get some stitch markers, which I will show a little later um, that I have made as well, and you'll get all these beautiful things. So please do send me a message with your uh, address information and that'll all be on its way. So congratulations, Linda. <laughs> and please do give me a, 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 we gotta figure out a new way to say that because we used to say give me a ring, but you don't really call people anymore. It's not really a thing. Anyway, uh, so we will move on to the podcast part of this podcast. <laughs> And we'll start where we usually do with what I'm wearing. So you may remember this from last week. I claimed it as a finished object because all it needed to do was be blocked and have the ends woven in. Um, but this is my Mariana Trench scarf, which was from my uh, February Knit Crate, which is a subscription box where you get yarn and a pattern. Uh, and the box that I have is called the membership crate and that's because it's the only one that has a crochet pattern in it So they give you a knit pattern and a crochet and you get to choose uh, And so the yarn on this is Knitology, which is a knit crate, knit crate yarn uh, And it's their silken worsted. So it's uh, merino wool and silk and alpaca and so it's super soft, especially the, the puff stitches. Um, and I really like, really like this pattern, which is by Vincent of Not Bad. And uh, it's really comfy. The only thing I know I, about it is that because it has the alpaca in it, it um, doesn't bounce back. So it like stays kind of squished. So you have to kind of like, when you take it off or move it around or anything, you have to readjust it because it gets squishy. But it's so soft and it's really nice and I love it. And blocking didn't really seem to change it in any way. Um, it blocked, well, it took a long time to dry, but I think that's because it's worsted. So um, yeah, that's what I'm wearing. Uh, and the other one I'm wearing is of course a tattoo. And so I'll put a picture of it in here, but I have, I can kind of show you maybe. Um, over here, I have this moon and there's something underneath it, but I'll show you that later. Um, but that one's really special to me. It's tiny and it didn't take any time and I'm sure I paid whatever the minimum was for it at the time. <laughs> but when I was, I think I was 18, my best friend and I 
got matching tattoos. And so it's really special. It's a moon because we were obsessed with Sailor Moon. And I mean, who's not? Everybody loves Sailor Moon. I hope if you've ever seen it that you like it. <laughs> and if you haven't seen it, go watch it. They just re-released everything on Netflix uh, or Hulu or one of the others, whatever. And uh, so we just went and got matching moon tattoos because we could. <laughs> so that was one of my first ones. That was almost 12 years ago. So, there you go. That's the other thing that I'm wearing. And I don't remember, it was somewhere in Escondido where we're from. Um, I don't remember, I think it might have been, I really don't remember. Art Throb, I think is the name of the shop. It was such a long time ago, I have no idea. But that's how it goes with tattoos. Sometimes you just don't remember these things. Because <laughs> it was so long ago. So anyway, um, that's all of what I'm wearing. So we'll move on to finished objects. Um, which I actually, because I showed you this last week, even though it technically wasn't finished yet, I don't have any crochet finished objects. I have a lot of works in progress, which we'll get to, but I do have some non-crochet finished objects that I want to show you. Um, and the first is I showed you a picture of this um, a couple episodes ago, but I finally picked up my yarn bowl. <laughs> so... My husband and I went out for our dating anniversary slash Valentine's Day slash, um, I passed this important interview from work, uh, Valentine's job anniversary as we call it. And when we went to dinner, there was a Color Me Mine nearby, so we went and painted our ceramics and they had yarn bowls. So of course, I painted a yarn bowl. And uh, you can see, like, I am not a good painter. I tried to put masking tape and then paint um, and have straight lines, but it bled underneath the, the masking tape. But I like it because it's pretty colors and it's a lot of fun and I had a really good time making it. And now I have a yarn bowl. Um, this is the best part though. Put a little heart in there. So, and of course I signed my initials and did the year and everything. So, <laughs> but that's one finished object. I finally went and picked it up. It's been ready for like a week and a half. And then, um, Another thing that I wanted to show you, uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, but my mom does Stampin' Up, which is like a paper crafting thing. Um, it's kind of like, what did I equate it to earlier? It's it's kind of like Mary Kay, but it's more like um, Krusty's. I forget. I came up with a really good analogy earlier as to describe it as. But anyway, you... Um, you sign, you become a member of the club and it's not like official or anything You sign anything, but you go, um, monthly to, um, the demonstrator's house and then she shows you how to make stuff, provides all the supplies, and then you order things so that you can make it yourself. So I went to this class that was a part of all of this and with my mom and we made some cards. And so I wanted to show you, uh, those cause they are crafty things and they are finished objects so this is the first one this is supposed to be like a kind of a gender neutral slash masculine card because a lot of course a lot of what you do is mostly geared towards women and so it's all really pink and girly and stuff um but this is this is it so it's got the glasses looking sharp and I like that because you can use it for any occasion and for any person so it's pretty I mean any person who likes blues and browns so that, that, that's a nice part of it. It's nice and broad. <laughs> um, and this one I think is really pretty. I like this one a lot. So it's got a, a lavender in there with a doily and all that. It's a happy birthday card. Uh, and that, like I said, these are all Stampin' Up! So this is all their stamps, ink, paper, ribbon, punches, die cuts, all that kind of fun stuff. It's all Stampin' Up! related. So there's the lavender one. I think that'll make a really nice birthday card for somebody special. And then there's this one, which originally, it there's also like shoes, a shoe stamp. But um, my husband plays the guitar, and so I thought this would make a really nice anniversary card because our wedding anniversary is coming up in April. So I'm gonna give him this as, his, as an anniversary card doesn't watch this podcast as far as I know so if he does you know what your card looks like <laughs> um and then this one which I'm gonna have a really hard time giving away but I think I have someone in mind to give it to you because it's amazing and I love it Ta -da! 
going. So they just came out with this new stamp set, uh, and it's mermaids and uh, they this unicorn, which is like my new favorite thing in the whole world is that unicorn right there. <laughs> She's fabulous. <laughs> uh and like a knight and dragon and like so all these you know fantasy characters and i just i cannot get over this unicorn like she's amazing and i almost ordered the stamp set for that but um it's like some other things where you are the the hostess for the month and so you get free stuff based on how much other people stuff order all that kind of thing and so um i'm definitely going to be ordering that when it's because in March, which is my month. So in a couple weeks we'll have club and then I will, I will get that unicorn. And I'm sure one, if I send other stuff out to people and do more giveaways and things that that unicorn will be a big part of it. Cause she's amazing. <laughs> uh, anyway, so those are my finished objects, my non yarny related, although the yarn bowl is yarny related, uh, finished objects. And then I will show you the stitch markers, which I guess are a finished object, but um, they're currently attached to a, one of my works in progress. So <laughs> I will show you those in a minute. Um, so yeah, so works in progress. So I have made some very slight progress on my Oswin, just chicken bag. Uh, my lace weight shawl with my yarn over truck lace. And so, uh, we were here last time and now we're here. So I've done like three rows, <laughs> but I actually am like remembering the pattern now and the, the lace is really starting to take some shape. So, um, I think I did something wrong though. Now that I look at this, like that's the leaf is supposed to be attached at the top. I might have to pull that out. Ah, well, I'm glad I pulled that out to look at it. So never mind. We've made no progress on the shawl because I did it wrong. Oh, so much for getting a hang on the pattern. Anyway, I will keep working on that. That's a definitely an overtime kind of thing. So something else that I started. Oh, it's really far away. I can't reach it. Ah, I have a lot of works in progress. <laughs> this is living in my cat bag, which I washed uh, once I finished my Mariana trench scarf because it got a little blue on the inside. And there's still blue on the inside, but it was nice to wash it anyway, so it's not going to get on anything. I'm not worried about it. Snaps. Um, but I started... A, another pattern from Rebecca Langford of Little Monkey's Crochet. So if you saw the Malia Infinity Scarf I made, the yellow one with the buttons, um, she has a bunch of other Malia patterns and I wanted to make another one. So this is the beginning of the Malia Classic Cowl. And it's the same basic stitch pattern, but this one is uh, kind of a more classic <laughs> cowl. So here's the pattern. And so I've done the ribbing at the top in the first set of, of puff stitches. The ribbing at the top took forever because crochet ribbing takes forever. Um, but luckily hers is single crochet ribbing and not slip stitches. So it didn't take as long, but, um, that's the pattern. And it's, you know, you work it as a straight and then you, um, sew it up to make the cowl. And I just really like this I really like these patterns. I'm kind of getting ready for the shoulder bag cowl, which I'll talk about in a minute because I got some stuff for that too. So that's the beginning of it. And what I'm using is Lion Brands Touch of Alpaca, which is 90, 10, 90 acrylic, 10, where is it on here? Do, do, do. Yeah, 90% acrylic and 10% alpaca. So it's really soft but it's um, washable, right? Yeah, lay flat to dry, but it's machine wash because um, of all the acrylic in there. And this is the bonus bundle, which I understand you can only get at Michael's. So this is uh, 415 yards for 200 grams and it was 10 bucks. So there you go. It's really nice. I've used it for some other stuff and I bought a whole bunch of it, of course when it first came out, and so I love it. And I thought I would use that and just make a nice, simple gray cowl. So um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and just uh, whip this out today, because um, it really does not take long once you get past the ribbing. The pattern is really um, easy to follow. 
and it's, um, is it an eight row? I think I wrote it down. Repeat. Now I'm going to have to know. Uh, let's see. Um, repeat rows five to 12. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I was right. It's an eight row repeat. And you do that, you only do it three times. And then it's done. Seam it up and we're good to go. So, um, yeah, that should be pretty easy to finish. And then I'll have a beautiful cowl and it'll go with a lot of things because the gray and it's nice and soft and warm. And because guys, it has actually been cold here, like in the thirties cold, which is really cold for us and it raining and sleeting and hailing and all kinds of fun stuff this week. So it's been the perfect excuse to wear my cozy crochet goodies. Um, so that's the classic cowl I did. I showed you last week. I bought, I, um, caked all of my yarn for this last week. So this is my NPR bag, like any good LA -ite. I have an NPR bag. Um, and it's housing my, my favorite pullover, my favorite crochet pullover from Katie and the Squid. So I got this party started. This is the, this is about halfway through the yoke. I'm making the extra large size. So this is, this is where we are right now. <laughs> and I'm really liking working on this. The yarn is really easy to work with. I'll go over that in a second. Um, and it's herringbone double crochets, which I did not know. I looked up the tutorial and everything. Um, but they're, it's really nice and it's really easy, really easy increasing and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's where we are with that. It's, I'm using, um, Cloudborn, uh, it's showing up a little dark, Highland Worsted, Cloudborn Highland Worsted, the patterns by KT and the Squid, and it is, uh, a Craftsy kit. So Cloudborn is Craftsy's yarn. Uh, they give, they send you the pattern and the yarn and everything. And so this is it. My favorite crochet pullover by Katie and the Squid. And I'm doing uh, the colors. Lavender Heather uh, is the main color, the body color, and then the ribbing will be raspberry. So yeah, so we've made some progress on that. I'm really excited about it. I work on this one, um, I have about three times of the day when I get to work on crochet. So in the morning when I'm waking up, because it takes me a while. I get up early so that I can slowly wake up over time. Um, and then lunchtime, which is usually when I work on my Oswin because it's small, it's easier for me to take to work. And then when I get home at night, I work on whatever I wanna. So that's on its way. Um, the other thing that I've started, I showed you the yarn for this last week, is my crocheted knockers. So I told you about the Knitted Knockers Cal that Hannah of the Cozy Crochet Cottage is doing. And I got my yarn and everything. And so I started my first knocker. Uh, and here she is. <laughs> so um, the, it's, the pattern is really easy. It's crocheting continuous rounds um, following their, um, it's, it's a little bit different where the increases go. So you have to pay really close attention to the pattern about where you place your stitch markers. Um, cause I wasn't really paying attention and I had to pull it out like three times, um, from the first couple of rounds. Um, but so this is the front and then you do some back loops and you do the back. So I'm about, uh, a couple of rows in to the back. I only have a couple more rows to go on this and the, this is a double D size. And then I'll do another one of those. And then whatever yarn I have left, they say the most requested on average are B's and C's. So based on how much yarn I have left, I'll, I'll probably end up doing a B cup size. Um, and the only thing that I've had with this is this yarn is really slick. It's like super slippery. And so I keep like losing it <laughs> in my, the hand that's holding the yarn and the pad, the project and everything, it keeps losing tension because it pulls cause it's so slick. So, but it is really soft. Um, 
and I think it's it's turning out pretty good and uh, that'll be great um, so the yarn is Cascade Farms ultra Pima fine so it's hundred percent Pima cotton and this is the color sand which is number three seven one seven and I got four skeins of that if they're 50 gram skeins so and yeah this is how much I have left I should be able to get um, I don't think I'll get another D double D out of this but I might be able to get a B so once I and I don't want there to be a lot of ends um, because one, you don't want the knots, uh, and two, if you don't tie the knots, then you risk it coming apart. And because it's for charity and because of what it's for, I really don't want that to be the case. So this is the this is the pattern. I downloaded this off of their website. And so it's all free, it's all for charity. The, they, the knockers are for women who have had lumpectomies or mastectomies and they need prosthetics um, to put in their bras and bathing suits and things. And so you can go, and this is the crochet pattern. They also, of course, have knitted patterns because it's called Knitted Knockers. Um, and there is a tutorial video, which I found helpful. Um, it's really, 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 really basic. Like starts at the, I kind of know, but don't really know how to crochet side of things. So I had to skip through a lot because I was like, okay, what's going on with this? <laughs> and I'll show you the bag it's in later because that's from my stash away. And I don't want to spoil it because that is the most exciting section of all today. <laughs> so knitted knockers are started. Uh, the cowl started on March 1st, which was Thursday, which is when I started working on mine. So it was perfect. Um, and I'll put all the information on the cowl uh, Ravelry group discussion and all that kind of fun stuff so that you can get in on that as well. Um, because like I said, it's all for charity. Uh, you make the knocker. You mail it in, they stuff it, and they send it to women who need it for 100% for free. So um, it's um, a really good cause, I think, and I hope that like a million people will participate in it so they can get a whole lot uh, sent to them and send them out. Uh, so the last whip that I will show you uh, was saved the most exciting for last. There's no such thing as the best, but the most exciting thing for last, and that is what I have been talking to you about forever, uh, basically since the first podcast episode, and I finally got the yarn, and so I've gotten started on it, and this is my blur shawl. So I uh, wanted to participate, and, and am participating, in the Fortune Cookie Cal, which is being run by Claudia of Crochet Luna, and the idea was that you crack open a fortune cookie and or use a fortune cookie generator if you don't have access to fortune cookies because apparently they're a california thing claudia did a whole thing in her podcast about where fortune cookies come from and um you read the fortune and then you come up with a pattern based on it so my fortune was your courage will bring you honor which was very meaningful for me because i was you know going through stuff with that interview and everything for work and uh, the first thing that I thought of was Mulan, courage, honor, fortune cookies. <laughs> like it's just Lunar New Year is the reason that's behind it. And so um, I looked online and I found the uh, blur shawl from Deanne of Addie Day Designs. And I also discovered her podcast, which is uh, so much fun and you should watch it. Um, and so I will show you the pattern. And is a paid pattern. I believe um, it was about five or six dollars. Um, but this is the blur shawl. Blur. And where is her? She's so humble. She doesn't even put like her name really big on it or anything. But I'll put it all up so you see. Eddie Eddie Day Designs. Um, and so it's a color work project, and I thought that would be great because I haven't really done one of those before. And so I uh, wanted it to be really special and I wanted the colors to be particular because I wanted them to match um, colors from Mulan. So I'll, sh I'll put up the picture that I found that I sent to uh, Molly for the inspiration. Um, and I cannot find where it came from. It looks like a deviant art picture and the person signed it. So just know that I just found this on the internet and it's not mine. And I 
would have liked to have asked them first. Um, but since it's just randomly on the internet, we'll just put it up anyway. Um, but it's like a contrast. So on the one side, it's her, uh, you know, her bride side, her, um, the side that people expect her to be. And then the other side of when she dresses up like a soldier to save her dad. And so, um, I thought that the contrast between those would be really great. And so I reached out to Molly Klein of Molly Klein Design. Um, I had ordered some yarn from her before and I really liked it. And I knew she was, uh, you know, indie dyer and all that kind of stuff. And she does the uh, sweet tea yarns. So I'll show you her little card, which is also really cute. And I asked her to dye some for me. So I just told her what I was doing. I asked, told her the colors I was thinking of and then she just did it. And so um, this is on her uh, twist sock, which is 80% superwash and 20% nylon. Uh, fingering weight, 100 grams to 330 yards. And see, custom dyed for Stephanie. Mulan shawl set. And so the colors are, uh, and I don't know if you saw that I did a live video on Instagram, I was like so insanely excited about getting this. Anyway, um, the colors are the, not named because it's a custom dye. So I've been calling this Mulan Green. And this is what I started with. This was the first color I used. And then uh, Mulan Blue. Uh, so it's a blue with some specks and some lighter shades in there. And then I'll show you more in the shawl because this is all that's left. But this is the Mulan Pink. And the red in my hand is not helpful. Um, so I have a lot of red tones in my skin. Um, Mulan pink, which looks like a little bow. And then the color that I'm on now is Mulan yellow. So this, well, is gold. And so the first three colors were her, you know, the one side of uh, the more feminine, you know, when they dressed her up so that she could get uh, matched by the matchmaker and everything. Um, and then the gold kind of separates the the two sides. And instead of it being like a sword, it's the repre representation of the, the gold medal she gets from the emperor. She gets like the seal of the emperor and everything. And so that's the, the gold color in the middle. And then next I will move to Mulan Red, which has the black... Um, specs in there and then black so black gray ish um and this will this is a representative of the the warrior side and so i'll show you um i got everything in on thursday and I got it all set up and wound and all that. And I went ahead and started on my knitted knockers so that I could get that going. And then I started working on my blur on Friday. And then I was at a meeting all day yesterday. So I had a lot of time to work on it while we were at this meeting. And so here is where we are so far. So like I said, I started with the green and then moved to blue and then to pink. So this you can get a better idea of what the pink looks like. And then now I'm on the yellow, the gold. Um, and I think this is really great. It's looking really cool. I like the color work and the blending. And I think once it's all done and blocked, it'll be really cool. And it's huge. Like this is only just, you know, the beginning part in and it's already ginormous and I love it. Um, so yeah. And so I, uh, will get into, um, the stash stuff and my finished objects and all that because I went to Joann's so that I could make my stitch magas. And so I'll show you some of those. So this is the moon. Um, I love moons, as you can see. And I think that's what made me think I should do my moon tattoo for today. But um, there's a lot of talk about moons and such in the in the Mulan movie. And I love, I love moons and the representation of the moon and what it means and symbolism and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so I found those charms at Joann's and then I, this, the, is my little paw charm, um, cause I do love animals. And then they had, uh, alphabet charms. So 
so I did an S for Stephanie. That's not going to focus on the actual charms, but, um, and then, uh, let's see, I did another moon because I needed six. This is the one that Molly sent me to go with the yarn and everything. And then this one, uh, Stacy Trock sells these on her Amigurumi website and it's a, it's a polymer clay like hank of yarn and it's so cute and so I turned that it's just the charm and so I turned it into a stitch marker so this is my this is my blur and I think it's going beautifully I imagine I will have this finished in no time at all because I'm obsessed with working on it which means I'm probably going to miss the blur along that Elizabeth of Earl Grey Crochet is doing because it doesn't even start until March 30th I think and I'm definitely going to finish this before then because I I'm really, really into working on it, and it makes me happy. Um, and it's a nice, uh, you know, repetitive pattern to work on. Um, and I'll show you some of the other stuff that Molly sent me to go with all of this. So uh, she, she makes soaps as well. So um, he got a little melty, so he looks a little strange. But this is my uh, pumpkin spice soap in the shape of a little gingerbread man. And it smells so good like she put it as she maybe a project bag too and she put it in the project bag and so it still smells like pumpkin spice it's amazing <laughs> um and she sent me some candies uh she sent me where did that go it's like a little bit of yarn it's right here so this is some of her yarn as well but to use for like hmm this is probably enough for like a toe or something on a sock or whatever. But this one, it's just a cute little piece of yarn. Little bits. And it's really squishy. This must be her, um, something, her other sock. It's twist sock and... Sweet sock! Huh. Anyway, um, so she sent me that and then she did she made she makes project bags as well and like DPN keepers and such which is a knitting thing apparently and um, So she made me this bag and it is so cool Look at this bag This pattern this fabric is so interesting and so different and I love the colors and I just absolutely love 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 this bag and it's so sturdy it's like nice and thick and it's the perfect size it's flat bottomed it's got the little handle holder thing on here like this is this is really cool and the zipper is a perfect match like i absolutely love it i think it's great <laughs> uh so yeah so this was like i was so excited to get this when it came in on thursday so excited and I'm loving making this blur. And it's just, it's amazing and wonderful. And crochet is great. <laughs> and so is everyone involved in the crochet community. Um, oh yeah, she also sent me some tea. So that's what I have here is my salted caramel green tea. I haven't even tried it yet, I think. It was still really hot when I started. That's pretty good. I thought it was gonna be really sweet and it's not. It just kind of has a car caramely undertone that's good. And it's, the instructions were very specific. We suggest brewing this tea for a maximum of two minutes. Any longer and you'll lose the delicate taste. Allow one bag per person and add freshly boiled water. Always best enjoyed without milk. So I followed those directions to the tea and it's delicious. Uh -huh, get it? Huh, I didn't even do that on purpose. <laughs> I love it when that happens. So nice tea. And of course she wrote me a really sweet card and um, I think I actually, do I, did I bring the card over here? I don't know that I did. Um, but yeah, really sweet card and uh, she's great. And I will continue to order things from her. And she actually has a podcast too. I don't think she's uploaded anything in a, in a recent while, but you should definitely check out Molly Klein. Molly Klein Design on, in, on Instagram, Etsy, YouTube. Check her out, she's great. And then, of course, Deanne of Addy Day Designs, too, for the beautiful pattern. So, okay, so that's 
the first, at the end of Whips and the beginning of Stash A Away. So I'll show you some other stuff that I've got. I've got the stitch marker stuff. Um, when I was at Joann's, I walked around the yarn a little bit to see because I had a really awesome coupon. And if there was anything I wanted to try that I hadn't tried yet. And I came across this. So um, I've heard of this before. This is Premier. It's Deborah Norville every day. And this is Anti Pill. I don't know. Where does it say? Oh, yeah. Anti Pill. Anti Pilling. So Anti Pill Acrylic. It's 100% acrylic. And that sounds fascinating. Like, how great to think that it doesn't pill and it's really soft. So I got some, I got two in the cream and two in uh, the aubergine. Um, this lovely purple color. And so I thought these would make a really interesting like color block scarf. And I was actually thinking that it would be interesting to try some different textures. And if those texture combinations don't yet exist, then I could do my own pattern. I thought that'd be really cool. If they do, then I'll just follow somebody else's pattern because that sounds great too. <laughs> but if I can come up with something cool, then why not? So I got that. Um, I got uh, another hook. So this is a clover. I've never owned a clover before. It's still not going to focus on the, the hook, but anyway. Um, and so this is a five and a half because I was doing a couple of things and I, both of them were taking up my five and a halves and I was like, oh, I should have another one. And then of course I started working on the blur and the knitted knockers and both of those also use a, both of those use a four and a half and my, the pullover also uses a four and a half. So I've been going back and forth cause I don't have enough four and a halves. So I should have gotten a four and a half instead of a five and a half, but whatever. So this is an eye hook from Clover and I'll give that a try and that's, Actually, I did not plan this on purpose either, but five and a hook is what's recommended for the Deborah Norville. So there you go. We'll just use that. Um, and I got to go with my stitch marker stuff. So when I went to Joann's, I found the bead section because it's right up in the front at my Joann's. And I was like, oh, they have so many cool beads. So I was like grabbing all these beads and like pulling all the stuff out. And then I was like, wait a minute. If I get beads, I have to string them. And I had no interest in trying to tie tiny little knots in some uh, beading thread or string or anything like that. So I went, switched, I put all of those beads back. You're welcome, people who work at Joanne's, because I worked in retail, I know what that's like. And um, went and got charms instead. And they didn't have a whole lot of charms. So I've been looking online and found some really cute stuff and I'll, I'll do that too. But so what I did was I got one of these little keepers. It was like $3 and I got all the charms. So you've seen, um, the moon and the letters. And so also Linda, if you're still watching, uh, my winner, um, these are what your stitch markers are going to look like. So, um, you saw the, the moons and you'll, you'll sense a theme here. I much prefer gold to silver just in general as a life choice. So I got mostly gold. Um, but this is the this is the moon and it came with some, and I don't necessarily care for these because they've got the jewels on them and stuff, but I know other people probably do. So this is the little diamonds, little shiny things. And these, I can't wait those. Those would actually make some cute earrings. Um, and then the letters. So it's every letter of the alphabet. So um, Linda, if you get in touch with me too, when you when you get in touch with me, I think I said this in the message, but if you have a um, particular letter that you would like in your stitch marker or letters, if you want more than one, let me know. I figured about five makes sense. So, and then I got all of the lobster claws and the, the rings in different sizes and all that kind of fun stuff. So I did all that at Joann's. Um, and if you do know of a place online, like Etsy or somewhere, Amazon, whatever, where I can find charms that are cute, <laughs> let me know. I think I found a couple on Etsy that are based uh, mostly out of Hong Kong and China. Um, that is some really cute stuff and they're um, pretty reasonably priced. So, but if you know of anyone, let me know because that would be great. Um, so I got all of those. Um, and then... I got another one and I'm surprised all these are coming so quickly. Maybe time is just going by faster than I thought. Um, but I got my next issue of Inside Crochet. So this is issue 99 
Yes, 99. And um, I've looked through it mostly, and it's got some really cute stuff in here. And actually, this pattern is really great. And I something else that I got was Happily Hooked magazine, which is an online magazine. You can purchase print uh, paper copies. And so I'll be getting um, like the January and February issue combined or something eventually. Um, but they had a review of a new yarn from Knit Picks. It's their Comfy Fingering and it's cotton and something else, I think. I think it's a blend. And they had like a seed stitch scarf pattern. And so I needed some other things from Knit Picks. Like I wanna make socks, so I had to get sock blockers and I wanted a shell pin and that kind of thing. So I went ahead and ordered some of this yarn because I think it was like $3 for a 50 gram ball or something. So it wasn't that expensive. And so when I was looking around to see, well, do I only want, you know, two or three balls of this yarn or should I see if there's other stuff that I want while I'm ordering? And so I was looking through this and I was like, ah, this. So this is the Lattice, Loving the Lattice Tea. Um, let me see who the designer is. I dog-eared the page, which I really, I don't know what kind of person I'm becoming that I dog-ear pages because I used to hate that. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's by Carolyn Bond. So this is the Loving the Lattice Tea by Carolyn Bond. And they recommend some yarn. This is actually yarn, I think, that she sells. This Carolyn Bond. Um, and it is 100% uh, merino wool slash mulberry silk. And I think the comfy fingering is cotton and polyester. And so that'll make it washable as opposed to the silk. Um, and I also got two different colors so that I could do some color blocking as well. So um, you'll see that later, but I, this, I got this issue and I've been looking through it and having a good time. Um, there's a cute little amigurumi in here. Um, it, this is more like lacy springtime stuff, which is really good for us here when, where it's really warm, um, most of the year. <laughs> and so I'll be looking through that to see if there's anything else I want to make out of there. Uh, and then I also got with that, they always send a little gift, um, and they sent the pattern for the Lolly land, um, Ladybug and his, and her friend, the aphid. <laughs> There's an interview with the designer and everything in there. She designs really cute amigurumi, so one of these days I might make that. And then it came with a stitch marker, which is on my knitted knockers right now, but it's a cute little mushroom. It, the, the charm keeps falling off of the, um, I forget what those things are called, but it's like, it's got the, the charm thing on the end is the circle and then it has a like a screw coming out of it and it keeps falling off of that but I think it's just the material of the um the charm because it's like a plastic kind of thing so any so that came with those and I really like that they send a little gift that's really sweet um you're paying good money for the magazine and so you get lots of awesome patterns and you get a free gift so there you go that's that. Um, I'll show you some other little things before I get to the bigger stuff, but I wanted to show you my husband went to this convention yesterday for his bands they played, and he got me this awesome um, Black Panther postcard. So the woman who runs the con is also an artist, and so she's at Critterosity. So she got me this really cute, he got me this really cute card from her. I love Black Panther. It was an amazing movie. We're probably gonna go see it again tomorrow, and I just absolutely love it. Love it. Um, and then I also got some more stuff. Like I said, I was going to mention the Malia shoulder bag. Um, so Rebecca is doing a cal. It starts March 13th. And so I already have the yarn, which is still right here. So I'll show you. I'm doing my bag in Jade and Accru in the 24-7 cotton from Lion Brand, which is what she recommends, um, just in the colors that I wanted. And then if it's a bag, you have to have the... Uh, stuff to make the handles and so what she does is she uses these grommets so I got a grommet kit from Joann's and of course it's in gold because 
I like gold. <laughs> and then I got some craft rope. Um, so she recommended a different kind of rope, um, but they only had like really, really white and they didn't have the right width and everything. Um, but then as I was walking towards the cash register, I saw that they had craft yarn, which was different than the upholstery yarn that I was looking at. So, um, it looks like it's the right, cause they, they also only had uh, 7 16 inch sized grommets, which are different than what she recommends in the pattern as well. So um, I was like, well, I'll just uh, make it work. And it, I might have to make the buttonhole a little smaller when I'm making the bag, but I'll figure it out as I go. But I got those. So now I'm all ready for that, for when that starts on March 13th. And I'm really excited to make a shoulder bag, something with like handles that's more like a purse instead of like a project bag or something little. So that'll be a lot of fun. I'm excited about that. And then... Um, if you did watch my Instagram live video, you saw that uh, when I got all of my stuff from Molly for my blur shawl, I got like two other things that I had ordered as well. And it was just kismet that they all ended up getting here on the same day. So um, I also ordered from Katie and the Squid, from, who did the crochet pullover pattern, some yarn. So this is her hand dyed yarn. Um, I was actually putting together a wish list for my birthday, which is this month, and I saw all these things on Etsy. I just went ahead and bought them instead of putting them on my wish list. Um, but this is her Everyday Worsted, and so it's 100% superwash, 220 yards to 100 grams. And it's the colorway Jump In, because it looks like a swimming pool. Um, and this is just recently dyed in January. And it's so, yeah, it's got the greens. I guess it also could look like a, the ocean or a lake or a river, any kind of water that you would swim in. So that's that. And then the reason I got these was because this one is called Jump In Oops. And she had it at a discounted price because there's a random dot of a pink in here somewhere, <laughs> which I do not care. And if I have to, if I, if it's a big enough deal with whatever I end up making, I'll cut it out or whatever, but I really, really did not care. And I was like, if that means that I can save some money, then I will do it. So, although of course you don't save money when you buy things, but anyway, this is the Katie and the Squid Everyday Superwash. And then I also got, and the reason I actually decided I was going to go ahead and buy something from her shop is that there was another chicken bag. So I had seen that they had more chicken bags and that this one was a drawstring. And I was like, I'm not gonna be selfish. I already have a chicken bag. I'll let somebody else get it. Um, but then a week later, they still had one left. And so I was like, I'm gonna go ahead and get it. So this is, this is another one of the chickens bags. This is by Debbins Bags, which is made by um, Katie's mother, I believe. And um, this one is a drawstring. So it opens up completely and I like that this is it's not just a drawstring it has the the little um thing to hold it closed which one of these days I'll tell you the story about how I got one of these stuck on my lip when I was a kid <laughs> uh good times anyway uh so it opens up like that it's a flat bottomed bag and it's it's just so adorable it has um pockets on the inside the inside material is the black chicken wire and it's just it's a perfect project bag like they just make excellent bags and I just I love the drawstring aspect because one of the things that I've noticed with the zipper bag on the chicken my other chicken bag that has the zipper is that if I'm keeping the the yarn in the bag which I usually am because I'm at work or whatever and I don't have a yarn bowl with me um, is that it can catch on the zipper and so I like I like the drawstring aspect. I think it's easier for pulling the yarn out um, if you want to keep the, the cake in the bag. So this is perfect. It's housing my knitted knockers and I love it. So that came. And then the last thing uh, is an embroidery kit. So you saw, if you watched my last episode, that I've gotten into embroidery a little bit and I found some people on Etsy who make kits for embroidery, which is really great for me as a beginner starting out. And so I found this um, woman, did I leave her tag in here? I think it has her name on it. Sarah Slavensky uh, and her, company is called um, Hoffelt and Hooper 
and I don't know why it won't focus on things today. Close enough. Hot Fulton Hooper, and you can find her on Etsy. Um, and she also has her own website, hotfultonhooperco.com. And um, she makes these kits, and she also does like already pre done embroidery and all that. And so this kit is for a seven inch hoop with this pattern on it. And she, what it includes is the hoop. <laughs> so this is a seven inch embroidery hoop. And then it has the fabric with the pattern printed on it, which is super convenient. And I'm really excited to get started on working on this. I've been distracted by my blur, so I haven't really been working on anything else um, in the last couple of days. But this is, that's the printed pattern. And then she also sends you the thread. So this is the DMC thread. And it's supposed to be enough to make the, to make the pattern. And I love these colors. They're, I think they're very modern, um, really beautiful, and they work well together. And then of course, a, a needle, an embroidery needle. And that's all you need to make a, an embroidery hoop. So I'm really excited about that. Get that, get her done. And she, oh, and of course the pattern. So she, um, sent me the pattern on Etsy when she mailed the, the box. So I'll be printing that out so that it can go with that. And um, I wanna finish my other one, the Bloom um, hoop that I was working on that um, is from uh, Cutesy Crafts on YouTube, her pattern. That's like the first one and teaches you all the basic stuff. So I wanna learn all the basic stuff so that I can then go and do do that one. I don't think I expected it to get here that quickly, but it was only coming from Washington, which is also where KT and the Squid is. And so even though it was two different purchases on two different days, they mailed them on the same day. And so they, they even went through the same distribution center in Seattle <laughs> to come to my house. So it's like, well, I should have let you guys know and you could have like combined shipping or something, save some money. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's everything. Um, I had a lot of works in progress this week, a lot of things that I started. Um, and so hopefully next week there are a lot of finished objects. It seems to be kind of shift, you know, going back and forth on that kind of thing. Of course, I ordered some other stuff, so I'll have some more stash things to show you uh, next week because they should be coming this week in the mail. And yeah, it's been a good week. It's been busy, a lot of stuff going on. Um, and because of the rain, like it, if you have ever lived in California or driven in California in the rain, you know that people lose their minds because it never rains here. So, <laughs> so that's everything. So I look forward to, um, your comments. Please do like and comment and subscribe, uh, to get more future videos. I try to do one every week. Um, and please, Linda, get in touch with me if you haven't already to claim your prize. And then we will keep crafting. Keep, keep on hooking. <laughs> so thank you very much. I hope you have a great week. And I will see you next week. Bye. Okay.